Good day, math learners. I hope you're doing fine and well at your homes with your family and loved ones. Today, we will try to learn a new skill in mathematics, and that is to find the domain and range of a function. So, I want you to sit back, relax, follow instructions, and enjoy the rest of our video lesson. Content Standard The learner demonstrates key concepts of linear inequalities in two variables, systems of linear inequalities in two variables, and linear functions. Performance Standard The learner is able to formulate and solve accurately real-life problems involving linear inequalities in two variables, systems of linear inequalities in two variables, and linear functions. Today, we will try to learn a new skill in mathematics with a learning competency finds the domain and range of a function. For our learning objectives, at the end of this video lesson you must be able to first, define the domain and range of a function. Second, finds the domain and range of a function. And third, Demonstrate appreciation through active participation and performance. Algebra is a potent tool for describing and exploring relationships. Imagine tossing a ball straight up into the air, watching it rise, stop, and fall back down into your hand. As time passed, the height of the ball changed creating a relationship between the amount of time the ball was in the air and its height. In mathematics, a relationship between variables that change together, such as time and height, is called a relation. There are many kinds of relations. Among the most important algebraic relations are functions. A function is a relation in which one variable specifies a single value of another variable. For example, when you toss a ball, each second that passes has one and only one corresponding height. Time only goes forward and never repeats itself. The height of the ball depends on how much time has passed since it left your hand. This is a one-way relationship. Although each moment of time is unique, it is possible for the ball to be at a particular height more than once as it goes up and then down. Knowing the time will tell you the height, but knowing the height won't give you an exact time. Before we start with our lesson proper, let's have a short review. How will you represent the given set of ordered pairs below into a table of values? Given set of ordered pairs. First ordered pair, negative 2 and 4. Second, negative 1, 0. Third ordered pair, 0, 2. Fourth ordered pair, 2 and 3. And the last ordered pair, 3 and 4. And so now we have our table of values. We have uh, first uh, the table x or the values of x. Note that these values are the first coordinates in an ordered pair. So we have negative 2, negative 1, 0, 2, and 3. Then we have the values for y or the second coordinates in an ordered pair. We have 4, 0, 2, 3, and 4. So this is how we represent the given set of ordered pairs in a table of or using a table of values. In the given rectangular coordinate system below, how do we determine the x coordinates and the y coordinates of the given points?
Yes, you are right. We can determine the x and y coordinates by looking at the x-axis and y-axis where the points are aligned. Now let's start with our lesson proper. And I will start with a question. Do you know what is the domain and range of a function? Did you know how to determine the domain and the range of a given function? Following the prior slide, we have come up with a question. What is or are the domain and range and how to determine the domain and range? An important part of understanding functions is understanding their domain and range. Domain and range are all the possible x values and y values of the function and can often be described easily by looking at a graph, a mapping diagram, or a table of values just like what we did in our review. In order to grasp domain and range, students like you must understand how to determine if a relation is a function and interpreting the data given. Now, let us try to define our domain and range of a function. First, the domain. We have here a mathematical expression that is written, and it says, The domain of the function f is the set of all x such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. Now, the range of our function can also be written in a mathematical expression, and it says that the range of the function f is the set of all y such that y is an element of the set of all real numbers. Now, a function is best represented or expressed in four different ways. Actually, even a relation for that matter can be represented or expressed in these four different ways. We can represent them by doing a mapping diagram or by using the set of ordered pairs. And using the set of ordered pairs, we can make a table of values. And with this table of values, we can actually create a graph. Now, these four different ways can represent a function, a relation, and doing so, we can identify the domain and range among these functions or relations. Now, let's try our first method in determining the domain and range of our function or a certain relation by using mapping diagram. A mapping diagram shows how the elements are paired. It's like a flowchart for a function showing the input and output values. A mapping diagram consists of two parallel columns. Lines or arrows are drawn from the domain to the range to represent the relation between any two elements. So again, in, in our mapping diagram, we have here two sets of elements. In set A, we can see our elements 1, 3, and 5. These elements are our first correspondence, our input, and our domain. In the second set, set B, we have numbers 2, 4, and 6 as our elements, and these elements are our output and our range. Relations can also be shown as tables or as sets of ordered pairs. Finding the domain and range in these situations is simple. As long as we remember what the terms mean, if a mathematical relationship is given in a table, the independent values generally listed in the left-hand column are the domain and the dependent values usually found in the right-hand column, which makes up the range. The domain can be found by reading down the first column and then the range is all the values in the second column. 
Now, when it comes to the sets of ordered pairs, we simply need to split the pairs apart into x coordinates and y coordinates. Now, because the x coordinates are the independent values, they make up the domain. And the y coordinates are the dependent values, which means that they are the range. In our example, the set of ordered pairs, the domain is the set of the first number in every pair. Those are the x coordinates. The range is the set of the second number of all the pairs, and those are the y coordinates. We may also encounter functions and relations on graphs. The independent quantity is usually graphed on the horizontal x-axis. That means, the x-coordinates of the points are the domain. Since the dependent quantity is usually graphed on the vertical y-axis, the y-coordinates make up the range. Let's look at a few graphs to explore how this works. First, let's examine this graph of discrete points. The only values that we know to satisfy the function are the marked points. We simply read off the x-coordinates and place them in the set of domain values. Then we read the y-coordinates and put them into the range. For this graph then, the domain is the set of values for the quantity negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. And the range is the set of values of the quantity 0, 6, 12, and 18. Now let's try to solve some examples and work together to compare our answers in determining the domain and range of the given mapping diagram and set of ordered pairs. I will give you 30 seconds and then let's compare our answers. You may start. Okay, let's try to compare our answers. For our mapping diagram, the set of values for our domain are A, B, C, and D. And for the set of values for our range, X, Y, and Z. Now for the set of ordered pairs, the set of values for our domain are 1, 3 and 5 and for our range we have 2 4 and 6 I know we get the same answer so let's try another example for our next example we'll try to determine the domain and range of the given table of values we have here two sets of uh, table of values so again, let's try to solve, work out together and compare our answers after 30 seconds. And you may start now. For our second example, let's compare our answers. So, determine the domain and range of the given table of values. For our first table of values, we have, for our domain, 
we have learned earlier that in finding the domain and range for a table of values let's just look on the elements on the columns of the table for the first column on the left side that's for the values of x that would be our domain so in this case the values for our domain are negative 5 negative 3 0 and negative 1 and then for our range we have learned that in looking or determining the range of a given table of values let's just look on at the right column or the values of y so for our range we have the values of our range we have negative 3 0 2 and 4 okay let's have a second example for the table of values on our example number two determine the domain and range of the given table of values so we have x the values are negative 1 0 and 1 and for the y we have negative 2 0 and 3 so for our domain the set of values of x or the row x we have for the domain so we have the values negative 1 0 and 1 and for our range of course the values on the row y okay so the range would be the values on the row y the, the values of y so we have negative 2 0 and 3 I hope we have the same answers so let's move forward to the third example okay we are now on our third example now determine the domain and range of the given graph now we have a graph here we have five discrete points given now we have learned earlier that in order for us to determine the domain and range in a given graph we simply get the discrete points or the given points identified in the graph and then we separate the values of x or the x coordinates of the said ordered pair or the points and then we get the values for y or the y coordinate okay then we get the domain and the range now for this example we have identified a point negative 4 and 1 point negative 1 and 2 point 0 and 1 point 2 and 3 and then point 3 and 1 now separating the values of x the x coordinates and the y coordinates we have for the x coordinates we have the values negative 4 negative 1 0 2 and 3 and for the values of y or the y coordinates we have 3 2 and 1 so therefore we all know that the values of x or the independent values would be our domain and y the values of y or the dependent values are our range so we have now our domain the values are negative 4 negative 1 0 2 and 3 and for our range we have 3 2 and 1 is that so you got it right okay very good This time we'll have some exercises for you to solve on your own to try to apply what you have learned from what we have discussed earlier. Okay? So determine the domain and range of the given mapping diagram, set of ordered pairs, table of values and graph. I will give you five minutes to solve. You may pause the video and then after five minutes let's try to compare or check your answers. Okay? So let's start.
at this time, let's have things wrap up. Defining domain and range of a function. The domain of the function f is the set of all x such that x is an element of the set of real numbers. The range of the function f is the set of all y such that y is an element of the set of all real numbers. Finding the domain and range of a function. To determine the domain of the table, just write the set of all values in x. To determine the range, just write the set of all values of y. To determine the domain of the mapping diagram, just write the set of all the first correspondence. To determine the range, just write the set of all values of the second correspondence. Now, to determine the domain of the graph, determine the values in the x-axis where the graph passes through. To determine the range of the graph, determine the values in the y-axis where the graph passes through. And lastly, to determine the domain of the set of ordered pairs, just write all of the x-coordinates. And to determine the range, just write all of the y-coordinates. Yes, math learners, we are on the brink of ending our video lesson for today. But before that, I will leave you a 5-item exercise or activity as your quiz to be solved at your own comfort. Read each question or statement carefully and choose the letter of the correct answer that corresponds to it. You may submit it on our next video lesson or you may submit it to our link. To our online classroom. I am sure that you have mastered the skills in finding the domain and range of a function. Have fun in learning mathematics and keep safe always. This is your mentor Sir Eric signing off. Thank you.